This is Optimal Living Daily, episode 3071, What a Life Lived Has Taught Me About the Life I'm Living, by Gregory Engel with nosidebar.com, and I'm Justin Mollick. Happy Friday, this is the award-winning podcast where I read blogs to you, hopefully adding a little bit of inspiration, motivation, or happiness to your day. This is all with permission from the websites, by the way. I'm gonna keep this intro nice and short, so let's get right to it as we optimize your life. What a Life Lived Has Taught Me About the Life I'm Living by Gregory Engel with nosidebar.com. An elderly neighbor of mine passed away recently. He was in his 90s and had lived in this neighborhood for over 40 years and had been widowed for more than 20 years. His family was local, but he lived alone. His passing was quick, and I thought how fortunate he was to have lived out his years in his own home and among his family and neighbors. Then came the difficult process of dismantling the 40 years worth of stuff left behind by his passing. His family took a rather pragmatic approach. A large roll-off dumpster was deposited in my late neighbor's driveway and quickly filled up with the discards of his life. He was not a practitioner of a minimalist lifestyle. Watching this unfold invoked feelings of sadness. These possessions that surrounded Joseph a mere week ago and were part of what made his house a home were now trash. As these feelings sunk deeper, I began to reflect on my own passing. When my time has come, would my family drop a roll-off dumpster in the driveway and similarly clear away the stuff of my life? What if my valued possessions would be trash in the eyes of someone else? What makes them valuable to me? And is that value misplaced on a thing? Looking around my home office, I imagine peering into a dumpster and seeing the things I value bound for the landfill. Yikes. What this thought experiment did for me was bring into sharp contrast the things I value and the things that are valuable. That is, what's valuable to me and what would also be of value to others. In an instant, some of the stuff I had felt were a burden yet couldn't find a way to part with no longer felt like a burden. Those things have an afterlife in someone else's world. They have value that extends beyond my brief ownership of them. While this may sound like I found a loophole for acquiring more stuff, the insights gained from this simple exercise led to greater clarity around the gateway questions for acquiring things. Now I ask all three when considering a purchase. Number one, when I'm done with this item, will it be readily useful to someone else? I love books. I love being surrounded by books. I own many books. Today, I buy fewer books and borrow from the library more than I used to. The books I borrow now are those with topics that are more transitory. Business management and software technology books are in this category. The books I purchase deal in subjects like history, philosophy, and Buddhism, books I'm likely to reread or reference frequently over time. These are also books that can be of value to someone else 30 years from now. To further this end, I've also stopped making notes in the margins of books I buy. Leave no trace, the master says. I may have been unconsciously asking this question for some time. There's always been a slight tug at my conscience when buying a book, but that same tug has been absent when buying tools for my wood shop. Since I work primarily with hand tools, most of what's in my shop will be of value to a woodworker a hundred years from now. And that's a comforting thought. Number two, Is there something I already own that will serve as well as this item, something I can reuse or repurpose? I have a high-tech winter coat that was purchased 20 years ago. It's in great condition, but I've been told several times it looks dated or that there is better technology now, so coats are warmer and lighter. Well, I'm dated, so I suppose that makes wearing this coat age-appropriate attire. Asking this question has resulted in the purchase of fewer clothes, opting instead to suffer the slings and arrows of appearing out of style, but nonetheless warm. Returning to the dumpster, I notice more closely what ends up in the daily trash. For example, we've shifted to making our own ketchup 
barbecue sauce, and mayonnaise as a way to reuse the original glass containers. It's easier than you might think, and the ingredients are known. And number three, is this the highest quality for which I have the means to purchase? Originally, I thought this would be an easy question to answer. Purchasing the highest quality tools for my wood shop has never been an issue. Where this question became interesting was when considering services. I drive a 16-year-old truck, and I hope to keep driving it until the end of my driving days. To do this, I have a mechanic who knows this kind of truck inside and out. I know I could find a cheaper mechanic, but I suspect the truck would be in the shop more frequently as my current mechanic has been able to spot and alert me to impending failures. He's clear in his explanations and always leaves the choice to me as to the course of action. While I continue to benefit from driving a safe vehicle, it's likely this truck will be out of use to someone else when I'm done with it. There are other questions I ask depending on the circumstances, but always there is that dumpster at the end of the evaluation and the final question. Will this end up being tossed into a dumpster after I've passed? You just listened to the post titled, What a Life Lived Has Taught Me About the Life I'm Living by Gregory Angle with nosidebar.com. And I'll be right back with my commentary. Something always comes up when you're running a small business. Any business owner will tell you that. Running a business is just plain hard. Endless to-do lists, employees to take care of, and your ever-present bottom line. So if you're a small business owner, kudos to you for staying on top of it. And now I have a solution for you. I want to tell you about Gusto. Gusto built an easier and more affordable way to manage payroll, benefits, and more. They help over 300,000 businesses by taking the pain out of tasks like automated payroll tax filing, direct deposit, health insurance administration, 401k, onboarding tools. You name it, Gusto makes it easy. And they really care about the small business owners they work with. Their support team is attentive and helpful. And since money can be tight right now, you'll even get three months free. Just go to gusto.com slash OFD and start setting up your business today. You'll see what I mean when I say easy. Again, that's three months of free payroll at gusto.com slash OFD. Thank you to Gregory. Like yesterday, there's another tip in here that is probably painfully obvious, but often goes overlooked. That one was briefly mentioned. It's the public library. Again. I'm a bit guilty of this. I finally got my library card when I realized that there's one on the way to the Tai Chi classes that I'm attending. Before, I did know the library was there, but it was still something that I probably would have driven to, even though it's close. I'm trying to limit my time in the car, after all. But I've been walking to my Tai Chi classes lately, which is about two miles, and the library can serve as a little break in between. Now, you might not have a library that close to you, but maybe there's one on the way or just slightly out of the way from where you typically go. And there are so many resources there available for free. Yes, it's easier to one-click buy or rent from Amazon, but if it's gonna save us some money and prevent some trash in the future, why not? So I'm enjoying the library now, but in any case, There were some great questions in this one to ask yourself before making pretty much any purchase. So thank you to Gregory for these. Thank you for being here with me every day and for telling others about this show. That's the greatest thing you can do to help out. It really means a lot. So thank you again, and I'll be back tomorrow as usual, where your optimal life awaits.